Okay, so it is time to actually get into doing some of these problems after all that theory. We are going to learn about getting our confidence interval. And there's a bunch of stuff I want to put up here, but this is the format. You take your point estimate, which is your average of the sample, and we're going to go plus or minus the EBM, which is our error. Um, I want to now give you the translation that we had found from the previous page. And the previous page was that our EBM is made up of our z-score, taken from alpha after we divide it by 2. You see this, this symbol here, this E alpha divided by 2. It's literally telling you what to do. Give me a z-score after you figure out your alpha and you cut it in half. Then we multiply that by the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size because we're going to be taking a sample, not one person, because you can't actually figure out an entire population from one person. We're going to take a sample from this group and then we're going to figure out like, okay, what can we guess? the estimate is. And my analogy was, suppose you have a car mechanic who says, okay, that repair is going to be 600 bucks, and that is his X bar, give or take 100 bucks. So that means on the low end, it's 500, and on the high end, it's going to be 700. Now what he's or she is doing is trying to figure out like, okay, um, I'm really probably going to land it here but the interval is going to be anywhere between here and here. Now, how confident is, the, is this person? Is it 95%? Is it 99%? We just, we don't really know. But what we do know is that if you are more confident, then your range will be more spread out. Okay, so he can do something or she can do something like this. Say, okay, I'm 95%. That it's going to be between here and here and I'm 99% it's going to be between here and here. A lot of people think that the higher confident you are the smaller the range will, or domain will be. That's actually not true. Um, if you want to get to like 99.9% .9 you know confident then you can be like well it's going to be between 200 and a thousand but see the more confident you get the less kind of useful this interval is because there's so much variation there now you can be 90 percent confident and say okay i think it's going to be between 550 and 650 but you'll notice that when you go to 90 percent confidence what happens is that this gets pretty close and your chances of being outside of that domain is actually more likely. So that's why most statisticians kind of stick with the 95% because it gives you a very accurate feeling parameter that your actual true average is going to be between this interval. But the interval isn't so big that it becomes useless. It's kind of like a doctor saying, well, based on your prognosis, you have anywhere between a day and 25 years to live. That's a very wide interval. So what the doctors do is they run the science and they figure out, okay, so if we have to give you the horrifically bad news about life expectancy, um, we have that. And uh, don't feel very morbid about life expectancy. Actuaries do this all the time for insurance companies. And if you love statistics and want to make a lot of money with your statistical knowledge, um, being an actuary is a fascinating, awesome career, especially if you love running the numbers and playing the numbers. So let us play a game of cars on a parking lot. Now, I, to the left of here, am going to write down a ton of statistics and some of that statistics might be needed for your paper pencil homework so let's get in the habit of grinding out all of the good data that we can read in a story problem if 50 cars okay so that right away is our n if 50 cars had an average time on the car lot of 54 days okay so this is our point estimate which is our average of the sample 
with a standard deviation of six days. Okay, that is our standard deviation. All right. Find the best point estimate and the 95% confidence interval of the population mean. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to tr try to find our estimated mu, but we want to be 95% confident. So our CI is 95%. Now, what's easier for us, decimals or percentages? Probably at this stage, percentages. Now, from the CI, we can then determine alpha. Alpha and CIs are complements, so this would be 5%. Now, we have to divide our alpha in two because this is going to be a give or take problem. It's going to have a high error and a low error, so it's going to be off above and below our uh, X bar. So we have to take that 5% and chop it in half because we can have 2.5% above it and 2.5% below it. Now what we will do is turn this into our Z value, our Z alpha divided by 2. Now the old school way is to go to the uh, Z chart and look up 0 0.02500. But what we have on the previous page is a table. So let's actually use that table. It looks like my 95% confidence interval is going to have an alpha, Z alpha divided by 2 of 1.96. All right, so what we're going to use is our 1.96. Okay. Be sure to have that table in front of you when you do problems like these. Okay, so now we have to determine our EBM. Our EBM is going to be our 1.96 times our standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size, because that is our EBM formula from the previous page. We had determined that the EBM is Z alpha divided by 2 times standard deviation divided by square root of sample size. And if I plug this in, I'm going to get an answer of 1.6. Six, three. Now that's going quite a bit of decimals. Um, you'll find that going two to three to four decimals is going to give you a result, the same results or similar. So then what we have is we have our 54. Okay, we have our, this is our X bar. All right, now what we want to do is we want to look at the plus or minus. So I'm focusing right here on this plus or minus. And to do that, I'm going to basically draw an arrow this way and an arrow this way. And this is going to be my minus and this is going to be my plus. So this is going to be my 54 minus 1.663. And this is going to be my 54 plus 1.663. So we took a look at this car dealership. And there are 50 cars were on the lot on an average of 54 days. What can we say about all Toyota or Ford or Kia cars um, based on all the lots um, in America? You know, because that's what we're trying to do is take one dealership and then extrapolate that to all the dealerships or find the mu of that of how long these cars will sit on the lot. So if we subtract these two, I get 52.3. And then over here, if I add these two, I get 55.663. So what's cool about this is now we can say with 95% confidence that the cars will sit on the lot between 52-ish and 56-ish days. So if you're not selling a car uh, between 52 and 56 days, you might not be a a great salesman or the dealership owner can start to track cars that have been on the lot for more than 56 days and say, huh, what's making this car undesirable? And why do I not want to bring these cars to my dealership? Because nobody wants them. Or what cars are flying off the dealership floor uh, well before their 52 day um, typical uh, average or point estimate there. Now, I want to teach you how to do the things on the calculator. So let's get to the calculator part called the Z-interval. I mean, this calculator function seems kind of logically named, doesn't it? You're taking Z-scores and you're finding an interval. And let's now um, write down what the format of this would be. Now, the first 
thing we would plug in is the standard deviation. Then we would plug in our, um, our sample average right there, our X bar, and sample size would be next. And after the sample size, we would put in our confidence interval. These are all the four pieces that we used from this stuff over here. So let's get our calculator up and let's show you where this is. Okay. So now um, I'm going to make sure that I am in classic mode. And uh, I basically clicked on my mode key to do this. This way I can see everything on the screen at once. Um, I'm going to hit out of my mode by going second mode. See, your calculator probably is already in classic mode. In many previous videos, I told you to put your calc in classic mode. So let's click this the uh, stat button. Okay, now we're going to do a test menu. So this isn't a menu that we've been to before. So click two arrows to the right or one click to the left. And you'll notice that down near the bottom on my calculator, this is option number seven. It might be different based on your calculator, but this is the Z interval. Now we can choose between entering raw data or stats. Let's choose the stats option. So click enter after you move this over to stats. And then you see that the four things that I've listed are the four inputs that we need here. So move again over to stats and you'll be happy. So the standard deviation is going to be, um, hold on, for, it's gonna be six in this case. I clicked five by accident. The average of our small sample of 50 cars is 54. Our N, which is the sample size, which is going to be our 50 cars is here. And you can see that the default of the confidence level is 0.95. Uh, this calculator can you know, make an assumption that most of the time, 95% is going to be the given um, confidence level. Then we click to calculate, and it puts everything in there for us. And then we have our beautiful interval. And you can see 52.337 and 55.663. Look at that. That is our beautiful confidence interval. Check it out. Now, you might have to hit um, enter or clear to get away from that screen, but again, you can get it back again by going to tests. It's still there under option seven, and you can just move down to calculate and get that there. Um, second enter will bring you back to the clear screen since this is a computation mode. Those of you using your phone or other similar devices might see some slightly different outputs in terms of like what it presents to you on the screen, but it, it will give you the same answer, so that's pretty great. Okay, so for our last example of this video, for part two of our three-part video series on confidence intervals, we're gonna talk about patients waiting in an extremely busy extremely busy hospital. So we have 30 patients. We have an average of 143 minutes. So this is our X bar because this is taken from the 30 patients. Okay. And a standard deviation. Okay. 46.5. Now we have a 99% confidence interval. Okay. 99% which means we can find our alpha, we can find our alpha divided by two, and we can find our Z alpha divided by two. Now we have a table for that on the previous page, but you know, logically we can say, okay, 99%, the complement of that is 1%, that cut in half is 0.5%, and so the Z alpha divided by two would be looking up the 0.05000 or the um, 995.995000, but again, we have that on the previous page, so let's scroll up and see which value that was, okay? We did all the work on the previous page. I went way past it there. There we go. It looks like for 99%, we're gonna use 0.25758. 25758. Okay. Point, uh, sorry, 2.5. Seven five eight. Okay, so now let's figure out our EBM. Our EBM is going to be our two point five seven five eight times our forty six point five divided by the square root of the sample size, which is the square root of thirty.
On the calculator, we do have to be a little careful. And I notice I didn't do this for the previous problem, so I apologize. So I'm going to go 2.5758, and then I'm going to multiply that by, I'm going to put this in parentheses, 46.5, and then I'll divide that by second x power of 2, that gives me the square root check mark, and then I'm going to close that off twice. I kind of like closing it off twice in this classic mode because that way I'm not kind of confused whether the parentheses is inside the root or not. And this uh, way I can also see it all. And this gives me an answer of 21.868. 21.868. Twenty so I'm going to write that down. My EBM is 21.868. So this is the um, give or take in terms of minutes, because the average of this hospital is 174.3, give or take 21.868. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to go here, and that gives me an answer of 152. Now what I did here is I subtracted in this direction. So this is subtraction, and this is addition. Okay. So if I subtract these two, I get 152.432. And if I add in this direction, it's going to be 196.168. So as a review, you take your average and you subtract your EBM from that average, and then you add your EBM to that average. So this gives us the interval of 152.432 on the low end and on the high end is 196.168. So we are 99% confident you're going to wait in that hospital between 152 and 196 minutes. It's a pretty long wait. So let's do our Z interval on the calculator. The Z interval is first going to take our standard deviation 46.5, and then our average of our small sample group, which is 174.3. Then we take our um, size of the sample group, in this case it was 30, and then we want our confidence level, which is 99% confident. So let's go to our calculator. And I think I have this all loaded into this calculator here. So hit the stat button, which takes you to this menu that says edit, calc, and tests click to the right, and then you can scroll down to 7, or you can just push the 7 key if this is the seventh option on your calculator. And it looks like we're already set up. Stats, and I've typed in our um, standard deviation correctly, my average of my sample group, and then the uh, sample size 30, and the confidence level. Click on Calculate, and there it is, 152.43 and 196.17 minutes. So I want to now emphasize that we've done two of these problems. You're going to have some paper pencil homework that's going to simulate these two problems. But also in the next video, we're going to have raw data. So stay tuned for the next video because that will also give you um, a heads up on what you need to do for the next uh, take home assignment. All right. Thank you for watching.